um, study of, oh, okay. I've been derelict in my duty to remind people, um, we get a lot of feedback from the videos and audios, and what one of the things we did is the interrupt, the interruptions is really hard on those who listen. So I'm going to be more uh, vigilant and diligent to remind you, um, we're going to try to keep the comments and questions. I'll get to everybody's questions and your comments, just write them down, and we'll go on during, during the Q&A. But it's really hard for um, the listeners, we get a lot of good feedback from them. So just, I'll remind you, I should, I should remind you more. And then I want our sisters in the Lord to be blameless. Um, going through the passages, 1 Corinthians 14, 1, uh, 1 Timothy 2, I've been, I haven't been um, giving the, the doctrine out about these things, about the, 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 the woman and, and, and the speaking in, in the church during the sessions. So I, I've been letting you guys down. I want every sister in the Lord particularly to be blameless for the judgment seat of Christ, okay? So I'm sorry to you, sisters. I should have been more vigilant to... I think the setting is so intimate. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it. In Minnesota, I was kind of set back. Everybody was there. And so I never dealt with this particularly. And even in Chicago, we had a little podium stage area. The intimate setting, and I forget about this too, it makes it easier to have these conversations. But to the listener, it's, and then the mic sometimes doesn't pick up. It's anyway, we got we to gotta be better with, uh, with order during the, during the sessions. Now, during the Q&As, we're free to ask questions and comments and stuff. But I just want to make the, the quality of the, of the studies audio is particularly um, the best. So. I, I don't want to, I'm not being mean if I say, yeah, that's a good point, we'll pick it up. Okay, so I might, I'm going to start doing that a lot more, because I know the intimate setting makes people want to, um, you know, make comments and questions and stuff. So if you do that, and I say, yep, good question, we'll pick it up, um, write it down, or I'll write it down, but I just wanted to make that known. <laughs> Speaking of, we will have a Q&A after the session, and then written offering, you guys know uh, the drill. By the way, <clears throat> for those who want to know our June uh, trip back to Minnesota that's the 13th through the 24th okay so we're gonna miss two Wednesdays during that period and one Sunday and I'll talk to Ryan and see if he wants to if you still want to come on a regular basis maybe he can come out here and you guys can go through maybe have Q&A or something like that if you still want to fellowship while we're gone we appreciate you guys sacrificing so that we can go back and minister to the Saints in Minnesota for those in Minnesota or anywhere if you just want to be a part of that uh, offsetting that expense, you can give uh, online or send it to our P.O. box, or if you guys want to here, you guys can just um, designate that in, in an offer. All right, <clears throat> let's get into our study in the book of, we're going to, I put 2 Thessalonians because that's where we're jumping from, but we're going to finish up a couple of things from 1 Timothy 3 as well, okay? So let's start in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. <clears throat> now today, today is Sunday the 20th of March 2016 our study is part 3 of the mystery of godliness and the, and the reason for those who might have not been here for the first two studies we're going over this issue of the mystery of godliness because Paul speaks about the mystery of iniquity the opposite of godliness in chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians so let's read a couple of verses and then have a word of prayer. We'll begin our study. <clears throat> Second Thessalonians chapter number 2, look at verse number 6. Paul says, And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this time together this morning. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, your precious Son, uh, the glorious Savior of mankind, uh, particularly those that believe on him. We thank you for his shed blood on that cross, Father, that innocent, powerful blood that gives us a relationship with you through him. Thank you for your Holy Scripture, Father. Thank you that we can have this time together to come here in peace with those who like precious faith to learn more and more about your Holy Word. We, we ask, Father, that this uh, study is profitable to us and glorifying to you. 
And as always, give us a great appreciation of your precious son, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's in his wonderful name we pray. Amen. All right, so when Paul talks about this antichrist or that wicked, he's that man of sin who's going to come in the future. He's, he might even be on earth right now, but no one knows who he is. Because what's hindering him, what's hindering his manifestation and his fullness is the body of Christ. <clears throat> Notice in verse 6 again. And now ye know what withholdeth that he, this man of sin, commonly called the Antichrist, might be revealed, notice, in his time. He has a time to come on the scene in prophecy, okay? God has not desired that he comes on this scene uh, uh, in, in fullness yet. But notice what Paul says, verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity, this, we went through all of that, doth already work. His spirit is in the world. Even John, uh, 1 John, he talks about there are many Antichrists. That spirit is in the world. But only he who now letteth, and remember the one new man, which is the body of Christ, which we're, we're going to finish looking at in chapter uh, 3 of 1 Timothy. He says, only he who now letteth, that word let means to hinder, right? To hold back. Will, hit, will let or hinder until he be taken out of the way. Today we're going to see that the body of Christ will be taken out of this world before the manifestation of that wicked antichrist. Okay? Now go over a couple pages to 1 Timothy chapter 3. <clears throat> and look at verse 16. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. We've been looking the last couple of weeks at this mystery of godliness. Remember, godliness and iniquity are opposing forces. Godliness is standing for and promoting the truth of God's word. Iniquity is a suppressing or going against, opposing the truth of God's word. Now notice verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. We went over those passages. How God has chosen to manifest himself in a group of Jews and Gentiles in one body. God manifests himself on the scene of human history in this dispensation of grace through believers in the body of Christ. Paul says, justified in the spirit. We saw that, that through that spirit of God, we have that righteous position and so forth. Um, before Almighty God. We know that we as, as, as individual human beings, we don't have righteousness within ourselves. But through that Spirit of God, we went over that in 1 Corinthians, you're washed, you're justified, you're sanctified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. The Spirit of God, His, His, His job is to seal us and to, and to be with us as we sojourn down here. Notice what we saw last, we ended last week, scene of angels. The body of Christ is made a spectacle to the angels, as Paul says. The angels are watching over. We saw that now into the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, Ephesians 3. Now, where, where we left off, notice he says, preach unto the Gentiles. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul's doctrine, his message, his ministry was particularly a Gentile ministry. Go back to the book of Acts. Let's look at some of this. When he says preached unto the Gentiles, go back to Acts chapter 9, where the Apostle Paul was called into ministry, where he was saved by God's grace, where he was called into ministry. Um, if you want to show someone what God's doing today, you can do what the Apostle Paul does. He goes back to his road to Damascus experience. In Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 22, Acts chapter 26, Paul relates this road to Damascus experience. And can I tell you something? You won't understand the Bible unless you understand the purpose of the Apostle Paul. My number one question to people, there you go, Matthew. My number one question to people is, why is Paul in the Bible? The Lord Jesus Christ had 12 apostles. He had Peter, James, and John, his inner circle. He had the 12 apostles. They're going to sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Then why did he have to raise up a new apostle, Paul, a sent one? He already had 12. Matthias, when Judas fell, when Judas died, Matthias was chosen by Christ to take his place. Paul didn't qualify to be one of the 12. He wasn't there from the baptism of John, trusting Jesus as the Messiah. He wasn't with them all the way through to his resurrection and ascension and so forth. They had to be, they had to be part of that prophetic kingdom program. Saul was against them. Notice here in Acts chapter 9, <clears throat> when Saul is saved, notice what the Lord says to this faithful brother named Ananias. 
who, who the Lord sends to Saul, who's, he, he's been three days and three nights without sight. He hasn't eaten. He's a type of the nation of Israel. And, and, and their unbelief set aside. Saul represents the nation of Israel when God set them aside. Notice here in verse number 15. But the Lord said unto him, Ananias was afraid to go to him. He says, the Lord Jesus says to Ananias, Go thy way. For he is a what type of vessel? Chosen, chosen vessel. Who chose him? God, God did. Mm -hmm. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. If you attack Paul and his ministry and message and who he is, his apostleship, you're attacking God Almighty. He says, by the will of God. Romans chapter 1, he starts it off, by the will of God. Okay, An apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Now notice here, so Christ chose Paul, a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the, who? The Gentiles and kings, those are literally the Gentiles, and the children of Israel. And what, what you see is that now, with the salvation of Saul, God changes his program from being uniquely the nation of Israel, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, to now the entire world, but with a particular bent of preached unto the Gentiles, as Paul says over there. Let's look at a couple more of those. He says over, uh, uh, go to Acts chapter 13. Look at Acts chapter 13 in verse 46. If you're going to understand your Bible, if you're going to understand what God is doing today, if you're going to even come to close to pleasing God, you have to know what he's doing. And what he's doing today is the mystery of Christ given to the Apostle Paul, and that's what Paul is preaching among the Gentiles. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter number 13, if you will. Look at verse 46. Acts chapter 13, verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold. They were speaking to these Jews, and, and these Jewish people didn't believe on them about, uh, about the Lord, their word about the Lord, their testimony about the Lord Jesus. So what what they do? Verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. Why? To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. And as Paul goes west to Rome, as he goes west, now I'm going east, but west for you guys, as he leaves Jerusalem and goes west to Rome, he's going to encounter more and more Gentiles, okay? God is separating him to his Gentile ministry. But I want you to see this. It was to the Jew first, Romans 1, 16. It was necessary that the word of God should, have, should first have been spoken to you. But seeing he put it from you, they didn't want it, the nation of Israel. And judge yourselves unworthy of what? Everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the who? Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles. By the way, the Gentiles are the people of all other nations. You hear the, the Bible use the word nations. That's the land mass. But the people of those nations are called Gentiles. That's you and I. Look, notice what he says. And thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. You see that? And when the Gentiles heard this, man, they were glad. And glorified the word of the Lord. That righteous judge made this decree. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Go back with me, if you will, to chapter 18. Go to Acts chapter 18. And so you see this progressive ministry of Paul going out to the Gentiles. So when he says in, in, in a mystery of Godliness, he was preached unto the Gentiles. By the way, I am under the strong conviction that the purpose of my life was to come out here to California five years ago. And to give this nation... This last frontier, that the nation grew from the East Coast to the West Coast. There hasn't been a day that we regret it. Yea, didn't think that we were called to California. Even, even our decision to come here, we get a call from Ryan from Modesto, California. It's, it, it was crazy what we were talking about. The providence of God. But I think what God wants is this last shout to the world, to this country, to the world. Because our country is supposed to be that light. It's, it's over now. It's over now. We're going to, we're about to be out of here. All right, Acts chapter 18, verse 6. And when they opposed themselves, look, let's start at verse 5. This, you know, look for context. Go up to verse 4. And, and he, that's Paul, reasoned in the synagogue. So this is Acts 18, verse 4. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. As you guys know, Paul's custom, as he's going west, is to go to all the cities where there are Jewish synagogues 
and, 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 and share this, this message of their Messiah with them as well. He says in verse number 5, And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. Now watch what happens when the apostle explains who their Messiah is, Jesus. And when they oppose themselves, check that out, they oppose themselves, why? Because God has given them an opportunity to believe on his son, their Messiah, but they, they're opposing themselves. And they blasphemed, they spoke evil of this way of the Lord. He shook his raiment, that's something Jews would do, to show, it's an outward sign of, okay, if, if, you, if you want to reject it, I'm done with you. Okay, He shook his raiment <clears throat> and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. He says, I gave you the testimony. I'm done. From henceforth, I will go unto the who? <clears throat> the Gentiles. Go back to 1 Timothy chapter number 2, if you will. 1 Timothy chapter number 2. When Paul talks about preaching unto the Gentiles, that's his ministry. 1 Timothy chapter number 2. 1 Timothy 2, look at verse 7. Paul speaks about, uh, you know what, let's go down uh, verse 3 for context. Uh, 1 Timothy 2 verse 3, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. See, God wants all men to be saved. And after you're saved, to come unto the knowledge of the truth. That has to do with that mystery given to the apostle, okay? And the rightly divided word. Verse 5. For there is, how many gods? One. One God. There aren't multiple gods. The heathen think there's all these different gods, little g's. No, no, no. There's one God. And how many mediators? One mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. You know, there are religions that have priests, that, and you're supposed to go, and you, you kneel down, and you confess your sin to this man. And he will then intercede on your behalf to God. Paul says, no, no, no. There's one mediator between God and men. You don't bow down to another human being. There's one mediator, and that's the man, Christ Jesus. That's the Son of God. That same religion, He's the one. The same religion calls Mary a co-mediatrix. Yes, a co-mediatrix right? just goes against the truth of God's word. There's only one mediator between God and man. It's the man, Christ Jesus, the suffering one, Jesus. Verse 6, this is why he's worthy of that. Verse 6, who gave himself a ransom for many. Oh. Ah, but if you read the Gospels, when he talks about the Son of Man came and gave himself a ransom for many, that was the nation of Israel. But when you rightly divide the word, the mystery of Christ, what wasn't made known until Paul, notice verse 6, who gave himself a ransom for all, both Jew and Gentile, but to be testified in due time. It was a due time testimony. God didn't reveal this before the Apostle Paul. Because notice what Paul says. That's the very reason he's there. If, when I ask people, why Paul? How sad it is when I've asked preachers that. And they, they don't even understand. They, I've had some of them say, well, Peter and those guys made a mistake with Matthias. Are you crazy? Acts 2, the Spirit of God came down on Matthias. <laughs> the Lord Jesus chose Matthias. The reason Paul is in your Bible, look at verse 7, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. Go with me to 2 Timothy 4, at the end of Paul's ministry. So when he says preach them to the Gentiles, Paul's message has gotten out unto the entire Gentile world. And we are doing our part in these last days to get it out. I, I feel I so much that that's, that's our calling and duty, even coming to California, to just be that last bastion of shouting out, give this area some light of the gospel of grace. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. Timothy. Yes, sorry about that. Um, verse 17, 2 Timothy 4, 17. This is the end of Paul's life, the end of his ministry. This is the last book he wrote. So he's given his last will and testament, as it were. He's going to hand the ministry off, the responsibility off to Timothy and any other faithful man. Uh, look at chapter number 2. Go to chapter 2 real quick. Look at verse number uh, 1 and 2. Um, Paul is giving Timothy... <laughs> The same way Elijah hands the mantle to Elisha, 
He's given him the mantle of ministry. He says, I want you to teach these things to faithful men. Verse 2. Thou there, uh, verse, chapter 2, verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the what? The grace that is in Christ Jesus. It's that power of God's grace in the suffering one, Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me. See, people, they, they, they accuse us of following Paul, and well, we should, but they think we, we, when we say we, Paul's our apostle, that we're giving more credence to Paul than Jesus. Well, Paul calls it my gospel. We magnify Paul's We magnify his, his office. Amen. And so what he's saying is, if you're going to know what God is doing today, I'm the one who's going to teach you that. Yeah. Paul says, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Paul says, my gospel, three times. He personalized because we saw earlier, Jesus Christ says, that's my chosen vessel. Listen to him. No Jew ever had a problem with somebody saying Moses, right? They, you said, hey, the law, uh, what did Moses command? Nobody said, oh, you, you magnified Moses over the Lord. No. Mm -hmm. But Satan has gotten people to think that if you talk about Paul and magnify his office, that that's somehow taken away. What they mean is you're taken away from the red letters, four gospels, what Jesus is saying. He wasn't speaking to us then. He was speaking to the nation of Israel. But now... Through the mystery of Christ in the Apostle Paul, notice here, and the things that thou hast, verse 2, hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same, that same sound doctrine, commit thou to what type of men? Faithful, Faithful men. These have to be people who are willing to suffer for this truth of the mystery, to love it, who shall be able to teach others also, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And Paul, go over to chapter 4, verse 17. Oh, you know what? Verse 14. <clears throat> Chapter 4, 14. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. When you attack the Apostle Paul, you're attacking the Lord's vessel, his chosen vessel. And there's a price to pay at the judgment seat. Watch this. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord, and you know that means the righteous judge, right? Mm -hmm. Paul's putting it in the Lord hand. The Lord reward him according to his works. That's exactly what's going to happen. Now, if, if Alexander is rewarded for his evil at the judgment seat, it's going to, it's, excuse me, my language will be hell to pay. It is. Because to attack the Apostle Paul, you're attacking the Lord Jesus. Amen. That's whosoever receives him whom I send, receive me. When Paul was persecuting the little flock, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou who? Me. By, by attacking his people, yea, his apostle, you're attacking him. And if Alexander the coppersmith did Paul much evil, he's going to get rewarded. Evil for evil from the Lord Jesus Christ that you have By the way, verse 15, of whom be thou were also. So this, this joker Alexander, this brother, he's still at it. Paul's in prison. Now he's attacking Timothy. He's saying, be aware of him. For he hath greatly, not just withstood our words, what? Greatly withstood our words. That's called iniquity. At my first answer, and this is at his trial at Rome, no man stood with me. Oh boy. On Wednesday we're going to see a brother named Demas. Notice this guy. All men forsook me. And they did that out of fear. <laughs> and watch Paul's prayer. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Why would Paul pray that? Because they should have been there defending the Apostle Paul, standing with him. And out of fear of the Roman Empire, fear of suffering with Paul, these men are at jeopardy of losing their joint airship, their reward of the inheritance. Not their salvation. They're saved by grace. But when Paul prays, don't lay it to their charge, because Paul understood how you deal with him and his message and who he is, it affects your reward, okay, for good or bad. And that's the only reason I can say what he says. By the way, if sins don't go to the judgment seat, they do. We went through the thing, Paul says it. Why in the world would Paul, if it, why would he pray? If, if these sins don't matter, they don't go there, why would he pray that it may not be laid to their charge? Because th things are being recorded. And Paul says, Lord, don't record that one. <laughs> have mercy. He's saying, have mercy on these guys. Mm -hmm. He knows that there was going to be some, some loss or reward there. 
Verse 17, or could be. Now, can I say something when I read prayers like this? The Apostle Paul, God listens to the Apostle Paul. And we're going to see these brothers who did this, the ones he's talking about in verse 16, and God's not going to lay it to their charge simply because his faithful servant Paul asked them not to. That's the grace of God, isn't it? These guys ought to be thinking, they, they should think, they probably, they're from years ago, right? Thousands of years ago. They, they better be holding on to Paul for dear life when we see him. Because he saved them the reward of the inheritance. Now, verse 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. Paul says, you know what? Every man could leave me, but the Lord is with me. And did what? Strengthen me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That by me, the preaching... The warning and teaching of this mystery might be what? Fully known. See that? Paul's ministry, not only did he have the fullness of the revelation, he finished his course. He got it through the then known Roman world. I told Christa, the wisdom of God is this. You put it out in Rome in the West there, and what God put in these Romans, and, 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 and he put this, this exploration, this innovation, they're going to take it over the, the sea, over the Atlantic to the new land and so forth, which is what happened. And then came over here, and then it moved east to west. And that's why I feel like this is the last frontier for this message. It's given this area a light of the gospel of grace saying, repent, come, listen to the Lord. But can I tell you, every day it's getting, that, that, that call is not being heeded. Okay? Well, notice that the preaching might be fully known, verse 17, and that all the Gentiles might hear. Now, does that mean that Paul has talked to every individual Gentile in the Roman Empire? No. He'd still be trying to talk to them. What he's saying is he, he established local churches all through there, like we have here, to be a testimony to this area. And so from this area can spring forth the word of God. Okay, That's what he says in 1 Thessalonians. From you sounded out the word of God, right? All in that area. And so what Paul is saying, that the Gentiles might hear and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. So when he says, preached unto the Gentiles, go back to 1 Timothy, chapter 3. <clears throat> he says, preached unto the Gentiles. Look at verse number 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles. Now he says what? Believed on in the world. God's word was effectual in saving those he wanted to save. God's will is to save everyone. But God knows because of the hardness of heart, not everybody's going to believe his message. But there are going to be some soft-hearted people like you and I, who when we hear the word of God, we say, yea, Lord. We respond to it. Let me show you that. Go to uh, Acts chapter 28. <clears throat> Go back to the book of Acts, if you will. Paul mentions that. Acts chapter 28. There's going to be some of us Gentiles who say, you know what? We didn't have a relationship with the living God. And through His grace and mercy, through the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, we can now have that relationship. Thank you, Lord. You, you see why I always say, thank God. Thank Him. Don't ever take that friend. God, it, the Lord Jesus Christ was promised to the nation of Israel. Of all the people of all the world and, and his whole creation, he's going to sit in one place, and that's in Jerusalem, Israel. One day Jesus Christ is going to come back and reign on this earth. This earth ain't going to be the way it is. Don't worry about who becomes president of the United States. It don't even matter in the, in the end. Don't worry. Don't get your high blood, your blood pressure up, okay? Let them do their clown shows. Just let it happen. Because one day the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back and set up, but he's going to be on this earth. Of all the creation, he's going to be on earth. He was promised to one people, Israel. And through you and your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed, right? But it's to the Jew first. He promised to them. Well, God in his grace has done something for you and I. Through his blood, he's given us his grace. And now we can reign with him. We'll have the opportunity, if you're joined there, to reign with him. Because notice what Paul says here. Look at Acts chapter 28. You know what, let's read a little bit of this. Paul, Paul, Paul gets to Rome, okay? He says in verse number, um, let's start verse 20. 
For this cause, therefore, have I called for you, Paul says, to see you and to speak with you because for the hope of who? Israel. See, I didn't, I, didn't know, I, didn't, I didn't even realize we were going to look at that verse. But remember what I was saying? Jesus Christ, the resurrected Messiah, was promised to the nation of Israel. I am bound with this chain, Paul says. He's a prisoner. And they said unto him, we neither receive letters out of Judea, that's the southern uh, territory of Israel, concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came show or spake any harm of thee. But we, just, by the way, who is Paul talking to? A group of Jewish elders, okay? Now watch this. But we desire, verse 22, to hear of thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, the sect of the, the, the Nazarenes, the, 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 the followers of Jesus, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. And when they had appointed him a day, <clears throat> there came many to him into his lodging. <clears throat> See, they came to Paul. Paul for today, hey, meet me over here. To whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus. And how do you persuade a Jew about who Jesus is? Both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets. prophets. And it took him all day. Morning to evening. I told you I would love to preach like all day. You just give me a Sunday all day. I'm sure some of you guys would love it. Amen. Paul got it. Hey. Who, hey, he, look. Paul, he had strength from the Lord Jesus to preach all day. Verse 24. And some believe, now see, and some believe the things which were spoken. And what was the other part of that? And some believe not. Can I tell you, that's life right there. Yeah. Paul was the best preacher on earth outside of our Lord. And he couldn't convince some. So when you're sharing this message and people don't believe it, don't beat yourself up. It's not the vessel. People say, Bro, Ryan, you should talk to this guy. This guy. I go, man, in my time doing that, you know enough that if they want to believe it, they can get it. If they don't, they won't. The Apostle Paul. That's why I never, if, if you don't get it, look, I, I'm giving you my best in Christ. Some people just won't believe. Some people do. We get. I could preach the same message. I'll get, <laughs> I can get people say, oh, what are you talking about that, Paul? And other people are like, oh, praise the Lord, you said we talked about Paul. The same mm -hmm. message. Mm -hmm. These political commentators, I get a kick out of, they'll interview a candidate, right? Mm -hmm. And this one guy, he just, he shows all the comments he gets through the feedback from people. The exact same interview, he says, you're too soft on that guy. The other one says, you're too hard on that guy. <laughs> he goes, what did I do? <laughs> the exact same interview. You get from both. It depends on how you see the political candidate. Saying with this, either they want to believe or not. Either they have a soft heart. Look at verse 24. And some believe the things which were spoken of Paul by Paul, and some believe not. So I want to encourage you, it's not you, it's them, as they say. Verse 25. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. Now, Paul don't play that unbelief stuff, and neither does God. Paul says, you know what? You guys had enough. I spoke all day, and you still don't get this? It's a, it's a heart issue. Watch this. Well spake. Oh, sorry. After that, Paul has spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophets. That's Isaiah. Unto our fathers. So when Isaiah wrote the book of Isaiah, it really wasn't Isaiah. It was the Holy Ghost. God the Holy Ghost through Isaiah, right? Watch what he wrote there in Isaiah. Saying, verse 26, go into this people, he writing to Israel, and say, hearing you shall hear. They can hear the words, but they're not comprehending, are they? They're not understand, shall not understand. And seeing, they even saw the miracles and so forth of the Lord Jesus, right? They saw his miracles. Nicodemus says, we know you from God because no man can do these miracles except God be with them. But they didn't see. They didn't perceive. Why? It's always the heart, guys. When somebody can't see the rightly divided word, even if, if I broke it down to them, it's because their heart is hard towards God's word. They don't want to see it. We open up the floor for Q&A. You got Rondell to how she, she'll tell people, listen, I'm not going to say, I can't do this. I'm, I, I, I want to do things the way God's word. But come, Brother Ron is always there on a Sunday, all day, ready for your questions. And how many people come? Hardly any. They don't really want it to be true. I'm here. We're here. The brothers are here. We're here. Look at here. Verse 27. For the heart. It's a heart thing. You either got a soft heart or a hard heart towards God's word. For the heart of this people is waxed gross. 
and their ears are, are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed. By the way, when you refuse to hear God, he makes sure you don't hear it. That's why Christ spoke, spoke to them in parables. He says, so seeing, uh, seeing they won't see and hearing they won't hear. He says, I'm testing how bad you guys want it. Because he gave a parable, and later he explained it to the people who wanted it. The people who didn't want it, they didn't get it. God always tests, how bad do you want this? How bad do you want it? Watch this. For the heart, verse 27, this people's wax grows, their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed. And once you close your eyes to God, he'll, he'll make sure they close. When we, next week, when we finish off this, he's going to send them strong delusions. God says, you don't want to believe me? I'll give you what you want. God always gives you what you want. If you want light and understanding, yes, he'll give you that. If you want to stay in your unbelief, he'll, he'll, he'll. it's called perdition. You're down the road to perdition, destruction. All right, watch this. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. What, did, what would the Lord say every time he talked? He, he gave, he gave a, a, a study. He said, let him who have ears to hear, let him hear, right? Yes. He's saying, do you want it? You'll get it. If you don't, you won't. And understand with their heart. You see, it's always a heart thing. It begins, listen, it begins with the right heart and it ends with the right heart. God will give you, you know that? Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desire of thy heart. It's not that he's going to give you Mercedes if you want a Mercedes. No. He's saying, if you really want to understand, you want to know me, I'll give that to you. That's what he's saying. Your heart. And should be converted, and I should heal them. Verse 28. This is fantastic. Be it known, therefore, unto you, he's speaking to those Jews, that the salvation of God, which was promised to them, right, is sent unto the who? The Gentiles. And that they will hear it. Yeah. Believed on in the world. Verse number 29. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reason among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house. By the way, he stayed. You know what Paul did? He stayed there. He was open for business, whoever wanted to hear. You want to hear it? I'm here. And receive. Well, there it is. And received all that came in unto him. People wanted to hear more about this. Preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern who? The Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence. No man forbidding him. <coughs> Paul didn't let anything stop him. Preached unto Jesus. Now, go back to 1 Timothy. As we, as we end the mystery of godliness, go back to 1 Timothy chapter 3. There's one last thing about this secret, this mystery. It's how this thing will end. Since the one new man, the body of Christ, is holding back the manifestation of the Antichrist till he be taken out of the way. God's going to remove him. But the, the way he's going to remove him is through the resurrection or the rapture. It's commonly called the rapture. Look at verse number 16. 1 Timothy 3, 16. For, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. But we haven't gone yet. But as far as God's concerned, God calls those things which be not as though they were. Let me, give, let me show you this. I, I bring this up in our study in the book of John. Uh, go, to, go to John chapter 3. Go to John chapter 3. God can speak the way no other person can speak. He can say something that hasn't happened as if it's happened. Paul says it. He calls those things which be not as though they were. He called Abraham. He says, uh, Abram, your name's Abraham. Well, why would you change my name to Abraham, Lord? Because you're going to be a, you are a father of many nations. I don't even have a son, Lord. My wife is old. I'm old. She can't conceive. We tried for 50 years. What, what's going on? You're a father of many nations. Okay, Lord. <laughs> Call me Abraham then. Okay, go, go to John chapter 4. I'm uh, sorry, John 3, go to uh, Romans 4. Keep John 3, go to Romans 4. I want you to see this. And, and John's writings are futuristic. They're looking towards the fulfillment of the new covenant. That's why John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and Revelation are <coughs> futuristic words. The Spirit of God literally took John the Apostle to the future. He's, he took him past our day. He was actually in the day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He saw it. He was there. 
But it hasn't happened yet. But it has in God's time. It's weird. But you'll see what I'm talking about. And he will be there. And he will be there. He will be there. John, by the way, in the Middle East, the way he dressed back in the first century, it's no different than how they dress in the Middle East right now. He wouldn't just, he wouldn't be some crazy, he wouldn't robes and sandals and stuff. He, he'd fit right in. Nobody would think anything of it. He'll look just like them. Okay? Look at Romans chapter 4. Speaking of Abraham, when God gave Abraham the promise, Verse number uh, 16. Uh, verse number 16. Romans 4, 16. Therefore, it is a faith. God has to do something. He's going to do it by faith. Why? That it might be by grace. The only thing that grace can receive is your faith. Because if it's your works, it's, if it's of works, it's not of, it's not of grace. But if, if, it's a, if, it's, if God's going to do it by grace... It has to respond to faith. For by grace are ye saved through what? Through faith. Okay, now watch. Therefore it is a faith that, here's the purpose, it might be by grace to the end. Here's the purpose. The promise might be sure, the promise of everlasting life, the Spirit, to all the seed. Not to, excuse me, not to that only which is of the law. Who would that be? That would be the Jews. But to that also which is of the faith of Abraham. That will be the Gentiles, who is the father of us all, both Jew and Gentile. Abraham is the spiritual father. It is how, how God dealt with Abraham in Genesis 15 is how he deals with every man today. If you believe God, you can't do what he had, what he told Abraham to do was impossible to count off. Abraham would still be counting the stars today. 4,000 years later. No, he can't do it. He said, I believe you, God. If, if I'm gonna have that many children, I believe you. And God says, There's what I want. Believe. You can't do anything to be right with God. No good works. No. Jesus Christ did it all. His shed blood is the only thing God accepts. You know what you got to say? I believe you, Lord. Only the blood of Jesus. Thank you for your grace. That's what God wants. Believe him. Now watch what he says here. Verse number 17. As it is written. Now this is what I was quoting. So I wanted to make sure it was right. I have made thee a father of many nations. He said that to Abraham. Before he even had a son. Before him whom he believed, even God. Now, if you want to know who your God is and why he's different than any other God, and this book is any, different than any book, is because this is the only book that tells the future before it happens. Tells the future before it happens, and then it comes to pass. That's why you know this is God. Because God, who quickeneth the dead, he raises the dead, and calleth those things which be not. Hasn't happened yet. He, he calls it as though they were. That's what God does. You see that? Yeah. He calls those things which be not as though they were. So even though we haven't been received up into glory, it just to God it happens, okay? Go back to uh, John chapter 3. Let me show you this with the Lord Jesus. Because he's God in the flesh, he can say things like this. Watch this. Isaiah 46.10 says the same thing. Isaiah 46.10. Mm -hmm. You, you got that one? It says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. God's word says, you know I'm God because he says, go test your other gods. See if they can tell you what's going to happen before it happens and make it happen. He goes, I'm the only one to declare the end. Now check this out. I declare the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You said, what's going to happen 6,000 years out? Well, here's exactly what's going to happen. Write it down. Progressive revelation through his prophet. Let me show you what the Lord Jesus said to Nicodemus, okay? Verse number 12. John 3, verse 12. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? The Lord says, he was telling him a, a, a parable about the wind. He goes, huh? It's like that. If, I, if I'm telling you about simple earthly things, how in the world, if you don't get that, how you, you're not going to get anything about heavens. And the only man who could talk about the heavens at that time was the Lord Jesus. Watch what he says. Verse 13. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, man which is in heaven. But wait a minute. Wasn't he there on earth with you? Yep. Yeah. Was he in heaven? Yep. Yeah. Y'all take it to God. That's what he said. <laughs> he's in heaven. Because he's God. And so he calls those things to be not as though they were. That's what he means received up into glory. Go with me to 1 Thessalonians 4. 
The way this dispensation of grace will end and the start of the dispensation of the fullness of times, the next dispensation, will be through a gathering, through a, what we commonly call the rapture, the resurrection. Look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter number 4. Uh, sorry, 1 Thessalonians, thank you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. You can shout that out if I get the verse. Pass it on. Shout that out. 1 Timothy, 1 Thessalonians. The T's are all in alphabetical order. Hey, there you go. <laughs> you know what? That's right. All right, here we go. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Boy, that's that's dead, but they're, they're you know, the, the Bible uses asleep because they're just sleeping, then they wake up. Their body, okay? Their souls with the Lord. And, and that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. I asked my wife, whose great-grandmother in San Antonio, Texas, just died uh, a few months ago, Krista, her, her, her grandmother in Texas. I said, you miss your grandma? She says, yeah, but I know she's with the Lord, she said. So Krista's just like, you know, I'm going to see her again. Interesting. You sor you're going to sorrow, but not as others which have no hope, like the lost. For if we believe, now do we believe this? I hope we do, that Jesus died and what? Rose again. I mean, that is our good news, our gospel, the resurrection of his son. I mean, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, that's the believer, will God, see he calls him God there, bring with him. You know what he calls him God? What do we say? God quickeneth the dead. One of the things God does, he raised the dead. No man can raise the dead. God can. And Jesus is the God, the reason Paul gives him his name, his, in 1 Timothy, he called him the man Christ Jesus. There's his mediation to man. But here, when he referred to the resurrection, he calls him God. They which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Because notice he's coming. Watch this, verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain. We might be that generation. God, I truly believe we are. That we will be alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, again, that's that word, hinder them which are asleep or go before. Pre-event. Pre-event. Yeah, yeah, Pre-event. Thank you. Mm -hmm. For the Lord himself. Isn't that wonderful? The, you know my six-year-old asked me this morning to talk about the word and stuff. We have Jack Van Empey on. You know, so Jack, man, he's a bold, he's a bold old man. He, I respect him. He doesn't write the Bible, but he knows verses. I, I I, that's my goal in life, to know every verse by heart in the Bible. I always got Paul's, but not all of them like Jack. Not the whole Bible yet. He is 80-something years old. I got some more time. <laughs> <laughs> my, my daughter says, Daddy, she goes, she goes, do people go to Lake of Fire and then to hell? I go, no, they go to hell and Lake of Fire. She goes, well, what's hell? And I hear Krista, that's the, she goes, that's the jail cell that holds you before you see the judge. I said, that's right. <laughs> And, and, and Lake of Fire is the prison after your sentence. And then she says, she said, Daddy, who's going to judge? Who's going to judge the people? An angel? I said, no, 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 dear. Not an angel. Because she knows it's in heaven. So she's natural six-year-old thing. There are angels up there. I go, no, no, no. The Lord Jesus is going to judge everybody. He is. The Lord. His name means, that Lord means righteous judge. Notice, he's going to come and do it. It's personal attention. He's not going to send an angel. An angel's going to be with him. Angel's going to be with him. Michael and the rest of it. Because he's got to traverse through the heavenly places. We didn't get to that. We might get to that in today's study or next one. But notice that verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, it's going to be Michael, and with the trump of God. He's going to blow a trumpet. The trump means the blowing of a trumpet. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be what? Caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. To meet the Lord. We're not going to just meet him. We're going to have a meeting. He's going to be the judgment seat of Christ. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Go over to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Look at verse 1. So received up into glory. We're going to get out of here. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 1. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ... And by our gathering together unto him. The dispensation of fullness of times is going to begin to gather things in heaven and earth, even in him. <clears throat> and once our dispensation ends, when we received up into glory, go with me to Philippians 3. Go to Philippians 3. 
Philippians 3 verse 20. Philippians 3 and verse 20. We're going to be received up into glory. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2, ordained before the world unto our glory. Now there are different glories. 1 Corinthians 15, Paul says, one star different from another star in glory. And every heir of God, every child of God, every saved person is going to receive glory, obviously because you're going to be with him. But there's glory, the greater glory, as Paul says in 2 Corinthians 3. He says, the law was glorious, but grace was excelled in glory. Being an heir of God is glorious. But what God desires for us to go after that higher glory, to be a joint heir, reigning with Christ. Because not every believer will. Most won't. Most of the body of Christ has been unfaithful. Very few of us throughout time stuck with the Apostle Paul. All right, look at Philippians chapter 3, verse number 20. Philippians 3, 20. For our conversation, our citizenship, you know that word? Most of the time when people go into Greek, it's to mess up God's word. This is the the word policy, political, the politics of this world, he says, that's not us. Ours is there, is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. None of these politicians don't save you. <laughs> the Lord will from this foolish world. People are angry because the, the, the politicians are letting, letting us down. Our Savior will come and get us out of this world. You ain't going to change this world. One dear brother used to say, God, called, he, he called, God didn't call us to clean up the pond. He called us to be fishers of men, getting them out of the pond, right? That's pretty good. He ain't going to clean up this world. This world is getting worse and worse. The world is on a collision course to the Antichrist. See? Verse 21, who shall change our vile body? No matter how good you look in this little flesh here, it's vile compared to your glorious body. Notice that it may be fashioned like, that's when we get the word fashioned, we're going, we're going to look just alike, like unto his glorious body. As an heir of God, God has promised you a, glory, a body of glory and citizenship in heaven. Every heir of God, by God's grace, gets that. And then, joint heirs, the faithful, we receive the reigning with him, jointly, joint heir. All right? But you're going to get your body according to the working, whereby he is able even to do all things unto himself. Whatever you are in his kingdom, your body of glory will reflect that. So those of us who are joint heirs, depending on where he puts us, it's going to reflect that. Just like a, a military uniform, you can tell by the uniform, the stars and the patches, where, where that person's rank is, can't you? You can look at them and say, oh, general, they say, mm -hmm. yes, sir. You know, officer on deck. Just by looking at us, well, the same is going to be that way with our bodies, the glory shine. Because the more the glory of Christ that you, you, you earn now, you're earning it by faith. It's your, it's your walk. You're earning it. He's going to give you a reward. It's going to shine out through your body then at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? Go over to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter number 3, verse 1. Colossians 3, verse 1. <clears throat> if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are what? Above. Above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. We're, be, we're be trying to uh, go for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ, right? Philippians 3. Set, verse 2. Set your affection. The emotions of your soul is what affections are. Where's your soul at? Is it in this world? I tell Chris, I, we, I spend every day just waiting for the Lord to come. But for real, I go and do my normal work, work and labor. I don't want nothing out of this world. Y'all can have it. Not y'all. The people out there, they can have it. I'm just waiting for the Lord to come so that we can enter into our inheritance, man. That's it. Crucified unto the world. The, the world is crucified. I'm crucified. The world's crucified unto me. Galatians 6, Paul said, and I into the world. That's the attitude, isn't it? Don't be expecting anything's world. If, 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 if you're looking for the anything's world, stop it. Just say, Lord, wait for you to come. Then I'm going to serve you until you do. He doesn't want you. Paul says, they don't get entangled in the affairs of this life. Let that stuff go. I get up, I go minister to my seniors, I come home, I minister to my family and saints. 
Then on Wednesdays, I come do, uh, that night, do it, and then Sunday, do it, and then rinse, uh, wash, rinse, and repeat. That's my life. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the Lord to come, y'all. So is my family. I hope everybody is. Don't be trying to get nothing in this world. You can shout amen. <laughs> That's right. Listen, notice what he says. Set your affection, verse 2, on things above. Some days I'm wishing I'm floating on air. I'm just like, Lord, is that you coming? Oh, man. You know, I'm just helping them. I'm doing like this. Let's go. For real, man. I'm ready. I was ready last year. Let's go. Hey, come on, Lord. But hey, his timing is perfect. Maybe he's given a year to say, hey, let the world, like he did again. I don't know. Well, we're waiting for him. I hope you guys are too. Brother George used to say, some, with some people, he's going to have to pull twice to get them out of this world. <laughs> They so attached to the things of this world. Are you crazy? I'm ready to go now. Well, if if y'all see me walking crazy, that's because I'm trying to get up there. You know what Paul says? He says, I'm not looking to die while we with the Lord. He says, not that I, I wish to be naked, but to be clothed upon. Second Corinthians 5. Paul is not saying, because the question would come, you know how people say somebody died, he went to a better place. Well, if they were a believer, yes, right? Be correct. But God, that's not what Paul says, serve the Lord now. Be patient, waiting on him to come get you. Paul says, I want my resurrected body. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the resurrection, the rapture. All right. Verse 2. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. If it's of this earth, don't worry. Don't put your affections here. For ye are dead. Talk about positionally in Christ, right? We're alive, but dead to this world. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Now, particularly Paul is talking to the faithful saints. Because Colossians is talking to the loyal saints, the joint heirs. Verse 4, when Christ who is our life. Now, this is only true practically to a Pauline grace believer. Because Christ, the suffering one, is not the life of, of, of just heirs who reject the mystery of Christ. He's not their life. They don't love his appearing. They don't love it. Because if they do, they would walk in the truth of the Apostle Paul. So when he talks about Christ who's our life shall appear, and that's his appearing at the end, then shall ye also appear with him, where? In glory. So when he says received up in glory, it's true for all the body of Christ. That's why we saw over in Philippians. But... Paul, particularly here, he's focused on those who are joint heirs, who, who do set their affection there. Okay? All right. We have to, um, so go back to 1 Timothy. So we got about, uh, you can give me about 10 minutes. We'll, I want to just finish this off. 1 Timothy chapter number 3. So when he says, received up into glory. Uh, verse 16, received up into glory. All right, go back to 2 Thessalonians. Sorry about that. 2 Thessalonians 2. Now, next week, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on it for about five minutes in this study, but next week I want us to see this issue of, well, let's read it. Look at 2 uh, Thessalonians 2, verse number 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. <clears throat> Only he who now letteth or hinders will let or hinder until he be taken out of the way. We just saw that. Now, next week, we're going to fully look at verse 8, but I'll start a little bit. And then, when that rapture happens... And then shall that wicked, this man is so evil, he's just known as that wicked. That's how God sees him. Because he's going to oppose God's truth, particularly his prophetic truth with the nation of Israel. Okay, because now we're back in prophecy. Uh, let, me do, let me do this on the board. I, I haven't gone on the board today. Just for... When we talk about, so we got prophecy over here. Those things which God made known. We have the mystery. And then we're going to go back to prophecy, okay? And back here, Genesis through Acts, those books about prophecy. You have Romans through Philemon, okay? And then you got Hebrews through Revelation, where these books fit. Right now, we're here. We're in the grace dispensation. That spirit of that Antichrist is working all through here. But once we're gone, and God goes back to the prophetic program, the nation of Israel will be the issue in the earth. And what that man will do is he's going to, with all his power, yea, even the power of Satan himself, go against what God wants to do with that nation. Okay? 
Now watch this. So I, I want you to know that when we're gone, we're the only thing that's holding them back, the body of Christ. And as we get weaker and weaker, his power is getting greater and greater. So as soon as we go, boom, he'll be manifest. And the little flock of Israel who God's going to raise up out here, so he's going to raise up a new little flock, so a resurrection of a little flock, not physical resurrection, but he's going to deal with them again. They're going to be, they're going to be, they're going to be people who believe Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. They are going to know by reading the scriptures and looking out there, seeing what's going on in the Middle East, they're going to say, that guy's the Antichrist. They're going to be able to over some time. The Spirit of God is going to help them through the Word of God to know who this man is. Okay, let's keep going. We've got a couple minutes. Look, verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, so we're going to look at verse 8 and 9 next Sunday. Even him whose coming is after the working of who? Satan. Satan. And notice what he's going to be able to do, guys. With all power. Because the world's crying out for this guy. God's going to give him power. All his power. you got to get this. And signs. And what type of wonders? Lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the what? You have to love the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all... I mean, when you read this, we're going to go through this, it is a frightening proposition that God says, you don't want me? Okay, I'll give you what you want. Verse 12, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. We're going to be looking at these verses over the next week or so. But next week we'll look at this wicked. We'll look at how the Lord's going to consume him and so forth. But I want you to show how his power, he'll literally be Satan incarnate at a point in time during that seven year time of Jacob's trouble. He, that wrath, he literally will be, because he's going to die. He's going to be resurrected after three days like the Lord Jesus and he's going to present himself to Israel and the world as the Messiah. But really, he's the son of Satan. And Satan is going to be incarnate in this man. Okay? If you're listening today and you never trusted the Lord Jesus, you never had that joy. You know, the world doesn't have joy. They got temporary happiness. You know, they had parties and then boats and yachts. But you know that? You know what they don't have? I, I, know, I know the Bible says I've seen lost people. They don't have joy. They don't have joy. See, joy doesn't depend on your circumstances. Joy is something that the Word of God produces. There's joy and peace in believing. If you don't know for sure that you have peace with God, why don't you trust the one, the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus? He shed his blood for your sins. Trust God. Do like Abraham. Lord, I know I can't do it. You have to do it. God says, I did it. Just believe on me. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And if you're saved today... And anything in this world is tying you down. The only thing you should be tied, it, 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 and even then, people, your lo loved ones, love people, you know, love, serve. That's how you serve the Lord, love people. Whatever you do, you, you drive singing around, or you, you sell oil like rocket, you just love the people, right? And then we do ministry. Love people, make sure this ministry is able, by your, your joint supply, and get it out to others. That's our life until he comes. But there's glory to that. If you haven't been doing that, redeem the time. Don't waste any more time. The Lord is at hand. All right, and we'll help you with that. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ and life in Him. Holy Father, we thank you that as we look into your Holy Scripture, that all you desire right now is a heart of faith. It doesn't matter where we're at in our walk yet. It doesn't matter what we're doing right and wrong and all these things. If, if, if we first give you our hearts, a humble heart of faith, you have promised that you're going to work in and through us, Father. So let us rest in that, Father. You ask that we have faith in the, in the word of God's grace and love to all the saints. And when we do that, Father, it will be you working in and through us. Uh, we await the day of your son's return, Heavenly Father. But until then, may we redeem the time, serving him by serving one another and trusting the word of truth. We thank you. Uh, we ask you to bless our time in the Q&A as well. In Christ's name, amen.